Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, Born to Hear God's Voice, Dr. McLuhan shares that hearing God speak is as natural as hearing your mother's voice. From cover to cover, the clearest theme of the Bible is that God created us to have a relationship with Him. There are powerful stories in the Bible about people with whom God spoke. From the Garden of Eden to the great city of God in the book of, Jer of Revelation, gripping conversations between God and those whom he spoke to can be found. God made you to speak to you. Recently, a viewer from Pakistan wrote to me and said, how can I hear the voice of God? What a great question. Today, we begin a series of messages on hearing the voice of God. When babies are born, they do not need to be taught how to hear. They hear naturally. Hearing is natural. It is natural a sense as seeing or tasting. That's how we work. Babies learn from their mother's voice. They learn to hear their mother's voice in their mother's womb. Babies and young children can be trained to listen and to observe and to become more skillful, but hearing itself is natural. Learning skills can be sharpened. Listening skills can be sharpened. And so it is when we become followers of Jesus. We naturally hear his voice. Jesus is talking to you right now. You're already hearing him. You may not yet have become aware of what his voice sounds like, but this is the promise of Jesus. It is what he taught. My sheep hear my voice. That's a statement. And I know them, and they follow me. Jesus knows you. He knows your language. He is willing to speak to you in your heart language, communicate with you. God spoke to people in their own language for thousands of years before Arabic became a spoken language. Even today, only 20% of all the Muslims in the world actually speak Arabic. None of the Old Testament characters from Adam to the last prophet Malachi spoke or read Arabic. Jesus knows who you are, and he wants for you to speak to you in your language, and he wants for you to speak to him in your language. God can hear you speak, and he loves to hear us when we speak to him and longs for us to wait long enough to have a response from him. He knows how to talk to you that will help you figure out how to follow him and do what he has asked you to do. The Bible gives many examples of not only God speaking multiple languages, all the languages of the world, he also, there are also many examples of God speaking to young people. What a blessing it is to know that God, no one's too young to hear the voice of God. No one's too old to hear the voice of God. Uh, God spoke to Samuel. Perhaps he was four or five years old, a powerful story in the Old Testament, when Samuel lay down to sleep, as he slept that night, he heard his name being called, Samuel. And of course, he assumed it was the priest who was calling him. He got up and he ran to where the priest was sleeping and said, here I am. And of course, it wasn't Eli calling him. After three times, the priest understood that God wanted to speak to this young man. And so after he called him a third time, Eli simply gave him these instructions, go and lay down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, For Samuel chapter 3 and verse 9. And so it was that when God called a fourth time, Samuel invited the God of the universe to speak to a four or five year old child. What a remarkable story. What an encouraging story. It teaches us that the Lord is patient when he speaks to us. He waits for us to recognize that it is really him. And 
waits for us to invite him to take the conversation further. I'll never forget the day that God called my name. And like Samuel, it took me a while to figure out that it was in fact him who was calling me and speaking to me that night. The story teaches us there's no problem with hearing. The problem is not hearing as much as it is recognizing the voice that has spoken to us. And so the Lord is speaking all the time if we have ears to hear. Remember that was something Jesus said so frequently. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I was five years old when the Lord first spoke to me. He spoke to me again when I was 10, again when I was 12. I've heard powerful stories this week about people hearing the voice of God. A young lady was driving down the road and wanting to hear the voice of God more clearly and said, God, I'll do anything that you asked me to do. That's a pretty bold prayer, and a pretty bold young lady. And this is what she said, what she heard God say, pull into that next convenience store, go up to the soda, soda fountain, the drinking machine, and do a handstand. Now that's, that's pretty radical. I don't know if I'd try that, and I'm sure God wouldn't want me to try that, but <laughs> she was bold, and he took her up on her boldness. As she got back on her feet and began to walk out the store, a man came up to her and said, tell me why you did that. And she related the story of what God had said to her. And he said, in the store, I'm standing with a gun in my hand. I had planned to kill myself tonight. And I said to God, if you want me to not take my life, bring somebody in the store and have them stand in front of that, on their hands in front of that machine. What a story. And I'm just saying, God knows how to talk to people. He knows how to connect people who want to hear his voice and who want to hear from him. Now, I'm sure God's not going to ask me to do that in Walmart. That would be a sight. And I'm sure she was young and athletic. And the story is not to scare you as much as it was to encourage you. How much did God love this man who was about to take his life that he would go to that length to communicate with that man his love for him. And God will go to extraordinary lengths to communicate his love for you and help you know that it is his voice that is speaking to us. The Lord can talk to multiple people at the same time. You know, I don't like talking to people when they're in multiple conversations, but God can give you his full attention while he's giving somebody else his full attention. That's why he's God, and we are not. And he's always looking for people who are hungry to hear from him and connect them with our hungry to hear a word from him. And keep in mind uh, that this story again about boldness, if you be bold for God, God will be bold through you. But whatever your point of need is and your availability to God, he wants to talk to you and use you. But what we're talking about in this story is developing and heightened awareness of the presence of God in all that we do every day. When Jacob was running from God, we read that he had a spiritual dream. A disastrous relationship was broken, and he had been deceitful in his family, and there he was running from God. And even in a state like that, having done things that ought not to be done and running from God, God is not ready to give up on Jacob, and I assure you, he's not ready to give up on you. That night he dreamed, and he saw a ladder reaching from heaven to the earth. What a dream. Angels going up and down. He knew he had just had a spiritual encounter and that God was talking to him and he named that place Bethel, the house of God. And when he awoke in the morning, he said these interesting words, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Genesis chapter 28 and verse 16. And that you and I would come to the realization that God is in the place where we are. And we may not be aware that he is in that place. 
but he would open our eyes to see his presence wherever we are and whatever we are doing. Jacob had a heightened awareness of the presence of God. Uh, somebody once said, if God's that big, he ought not to be hard to find or that hard to hear. I mean, he's God, and he wants to talk to you. Jesus is called the word of God. He can't possibly not be speaking. The word is eternally speaking. God wants to hear from us, and he wants us to hear from him. We have the capacity to recognize his presence and his voice. May God help us as we hear these words and these stories have a heightened awareness of God's presence and the ability to hear his voice and to follow what he says to us. One of the keys to recognizing God's voice is to silence the voices that are not his. We are, live in a very noisy world. and When we do that, the voice that becomes the loudest voice in the room is the voice of the Father. And part of the way to hear his voice is to silence the other voices and sounds that we are hearing. Every day, voices call our attention. And it is often that you have heard people say, the devil made me do it. Have you ever heard people say that? To you? Have you ever actually said that? Isn't it strange that people can have no problem hearing the devil's voice and yet have trouble hearing God's voice? The devil's voice always pulls us away from hearing the voice of God. The devil's voice contradicts or challenges the word of God and the ways of God. Prophet Isaiah wrote, your sins have, have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2, we can reach the point where we have such hard hearts that God stops speaking to us until there's a shift that he sees in us and a willingness to turn to him and ask him to soften our heart. Religion hardens our hearts, making it more difficult to hear the voice of God. Have you ever noticed that Buddha statues have extremely long ears? I've seen some of these statues around the world, massive statues with disproportionately large ears. <laughs> but Buddha can't hear, and he can't speak. Some people walk around a black stone seven times and try to do it as often as they can, but the stone can't speak, and the stone can't hear. Some people offer incense and fruit to an idol that cannot smell or taste. One time I was visiting a temple in India, and the priest got angry at the lady who was in the line in front of me. I wanted to go through their worship process to see what I could learn about the people going there to make a sacrifice. And this lady stood too long in the line, and the priest got angry. She was hoping to hear something from God. He threw her sacrifice, her coconut milk, at the statue and said, Go! I got so challenged in my spirit. Uh, how often have I been too short with people seeking to make a connection with God, to hear his voice, to say something to him? My heart went out to that lady, not only for the lostness of hoping that coconut milk at a tin or gold idol could help her in any kind of way, but that she had been spoken harshly to by a person known as a man of God in that culture. Prophet Isaiah said, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, and though they are red as crimson, they shall become like wool. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. What a lovely verse. God offers a fresh start to anyone who wants to have a fresh start with him. You can come to him and ask to be forgiven, and you can be completely forgiven for all of the sins that you have committed. Another voice that pulls us away from hearing the voice of God is our own voice. We often found that your natural voice challenges 
the ways of God. Uh, I would rather do it my way. You ever said that? We even sing a song about that. I did it my way. The voice often says, if I were God, I would. Even as a pastor, I shudder when people say that to me. This voice sounds like the human voice of reasoning, of logic, to solve problems. It is not the voice of God. The Bible is full of warnings and the danger of walking in the path of my own way. Consider these two warnings from Proverbs about doing things our way. Do not lean on your own understanding, wrote Solomon, Proverbs chapter 3. In chapter 16, he wrote, There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. Our way is quite often not God's way. We become bullheaded, and we end up fighting with God. Remember a lady a long time ago, tender Ingleside, precious lady, just said to me in moments of pain, my arms are too short to box with God. <laughs> Indeed, yours are. She knew it, but she was articulating the challenge of doing it God's way. She was a godly lady. I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying about her. But she came to understand that God's ways are better. Now, the best voice to follow, of course, is the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God always speaks in harmony with the Word of God and with the ways of God. And here, three simple ways to amplify the voice of the Holy Spirit so you can hear the voice of God. The first key is to recognize that the Holy Spirit, uh, to hear the Holy Spirit, is to become familiar or to familiarize ourselves with the language of heaven. I heard a pastor speaking on this, and he called heaven as a foreign language. It's foreign to the way we think. His ways are higher than our ways, we read. The language of heaven, of course, is found in the Word of God. And when we read the Bible, we give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to draw our attention to a particular verse. It's like that verse was just put in the Bible for me. Have you ever had an experience like that? I've listened to delightful stories of new followers of Jesus who thought that God custom made a Bible for each person. He was finding so many verses that belonged to him. This must be my Bible. Yours has got to be different than mine. <laughs> it was so precious. And yet we, when we say this verse is just for me, it is indeed but it is also for somebody else who has that same challenge that you are facing. The Bible comes alive when we find verses in it and mark it. And even though we project the verses every Sunday, I always love it when I see people taking notes and even writing in their Bible, bring your Bible to church with you and mark notes in your Bible. I've marked so many verses in my Bible some people have it as a goal to get a new Bible every year because they've just marked it up. They need another one. Now, some religions teach that their holy book cannot be written in. What a tragic thought that is. That's religious thinking. God wants you to mark up your Bible so that you can get to know it better and then buy another one. Uh, <laughs> Just recently, I ran across a photograph of me preaching in Ethiopia where I lost my most marked Bible. It didn't come home with me. I hope it made somebody good coffee wherever they <laughs> bought it or read it and, or turned it into coffee, whatever they did. I miss it. And of course, I mark my Bibles electronically now. And so there's a connection that we have with our book. God wants you to add notes and dates. Those of you who've heard me take funerals say, I love to get a person's Bible and then just pick out the verses that they had marked and let them speak in that person's absence. God speaks through his word. King David said, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119 and verse 11. If you want to hear the voice of God, then you'll take time to sit quietly 
in the presence of God, and the devil's voice will be diminished and overcome by reading and being in God's presence. Spending time in the Word helps us recognize the voice of God when he speaks to us. A second key to hearing the voice of God is silence and stillness. I know this is not very popular in our culture. The Bible invites us to be still and to know that I am God. Psalm 46 and verse 10. Silence and stillness are good for the soul. Silence is putting away the distractions of life. Silence helps us to set an atmosphere to bring in the presence of God. And turning off the television, and social media, and all those things. We give God space to talk to us. And when we do that, we set a table and we come into his presence in the table that we set for him. Stillness opens the door for God to reveal himself to us and speak to us in deeper and more profound ways. David said, be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for him to act. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 7. Stillness turns off that inner chatter, that inner turmoil, that conflict of our soul, the guilt from past mistakes, the worrying about the future, hurts from wounds that you've had in relationships, harsh words that have been spoken, feelings of being inadequate, confusion about life. Have you ever had runaway thoughts like those? All these things keep us from hearing the voice of God. I release to you stillness from the runaway thoughts that are stopping Jesus from talking to you right now. Sit in his presence with joy, with peace. Here's a simple exercise I'd recommend for you this week. To quietening yourself down, ask God to tell you or ask him what he sees in you. I know that might be a frightening question to you, but I assure you God sees more in you than you see in yourself. He sees what you're becoming, not who you've been. He sees where you're going, not what you've done. Ask him what he likes about you. He made you. You are made in his image. There's tons that he likes about you. And he wants to reveal that to you. Now, the number one thing that God says to me when I ask him those what could be frightening questions is that I hear that he loves me. And more times than anything else in my journal I've shared with you over the years, it starts with the words, I love you and then whatever else he might want to say to me. All of God's conversations begin with his love for you. God is love, and all that he does flows out of his loving heart. That's how he started a conversation with a 12-year-old version. He simply said, Mary, God has found favor with you, or you have found favor with God. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have already found favor with God. A third key to hearing the voice of God is simply walking in obedience. John walked closely with Jesus and spoke tenderly to the early followers about following Jesus. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. John chapter 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, what wonderful verses. The cleansing blood of Jesus opens our ears and our hearts to hear the voice of God and to walk in his will for our lives. John went on to say, if we say we have no sin, we've deceived ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Jesus knows about your sin. And he's made a plan for it. That's why he's not mad about it. Because if we bring it to him, he'll forgive us. If you have the courage to admit before God that you are a sinner, have you discovered that your good deeds are not enough to cover for your sins? You've tried all your life to earn God's favor by doing good things. Do you long to feel the love and acceptance of God? 
Listen to so many stories of people who all their life just wanted to feel God's approval on their life. John offers a clear path to everyone who is living with the feeling that I have just described. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Would you ask him to forgive you for the sins that you have committed and give you the gift of eternal life? Ask him to open your ears to hear his voice and fill you with his Holy Spirit. Father God, fill each one with your presence who has prayed with me. If you felt the presence of Jesus coming upon you, write to me and we'll tell you more about how to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for loving us and being ready to talk with us. Forgive us for the times we have wanted to go our own way and not to listen. Help us to turn away from distractions and tune in to your voice of love. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.